Well, it's all about Italian ancestry here at Genealogy Gems today, and I've got the perfect person to talk to us about it and help you find a lot more out about your Italian roots. Sarah Gutman is here today, and she's a professional genealogist with Legacy Tree Genealogists, and she specializes in U.S. research, but also Italian research. And she's going to help us find out how to find our Italian roots. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thanks so much, Lisa. I'm a big fan of the show, and it's so nice to be able to get to meet you in person and to be able to talk to your listeners and hopefully share some information to help them find their Italian ancestry. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here today. And you're in New York, am I right? I am. I'm on Long Island, so you might hear my accent. And I don't hear it, but other people when I do shows pick it up on me. <laughs> we are talking about Italian research today. And, you know, you and I were talking about before we kind of got started about how many people have Italian roots. Uh, do you have some ideas on of the general population in the U.S.? How many people do? Well, thanks to the magic of Google, it looks like about 5% of all Americans can trace their ancestors back to some Italian roots. But I like to think that it's a lot higher, especially in New York. You can't go down the street without seeing a few pizza places. Um, and I'm sure other parts of America, too, have a heavier population than others. But for me, they, they seem like they're everybody has, has some Italian in them. Well, and I was we were thinking about this, that... Uh... You know, these days, it's like you just need one ancestor who, who comes from a particular country. You, do. you all of a sudden have to just break open your genealogy research and get into a whole other area. And that's the fun of genealogy, isn't it? Is that it's it's different depending on which ancestor you're working yeah, with. So. It's, it's really fun. About four years ago, um, the Italian archives really took off online. And we'll talk about that today. So the Italian archives is a free website and it is based in Italy. And I remember I was on vacation in New Jersey with my family on beach vacation. And I got a call from my friend at around midnight. She lives in Seattle. And she said, Sarah, you have to get on this website. I think your brick walls are just going to come right down. The Italian a town that your family is from is on there. So I spent the rest of this beach vacation <laughs> locked in a room and I had the best time looking at my family. I was getting records from people who lived in the late 1790s. And it is just amazing the stuff that if you can kind of crack the code and I'll hopefully show people how today to use that, that you can really expand upon your Italian ancestry and have a lot of fun with that. And really, once you, once you just get one ancestor, all of a sudden you're just going back several generations and you just feel so great about yourself and just makes these wonderful connections. Um, you feel like in the family from the past. And it's just a great experience. I totally agree. And I think I probably have done that on a vacation or two, <laughs> you know, where all of a sudden you find something. And I'm excited because I have um, some new friends here in our neighborhood and um, the husband has, he's half Italian. He's like, I don't know anything about it. So even if you're not Italian, we're going to be able to help our okay. friends who are. So uh, I know you have some slides to share with us. Let's jump into it and find our Italian. Roots. I do. So this presentation here is really for people who kind of have already identified maybe where their family is from over in Italy. You figured out what village your family is coming from. One thing I think that we take for granted in America is that if we know that one of our ancestors was born in New York, there's a pretty good chance that we're going to be able to find that person. But a lot of times when we're dealing with European countries, especially with Italy, unless you know the exact village that your family's from, you're going to have a really tough time. Now, if you've ever gone on family search, you'll probably have know that if you put in an Italian last name you, and you're looking in the Italian records, you're probably going to get some matches and that's really exciting and that's great. But the problem is a lot of the records right now on family search, they're available in the catalog, but they haven't been indexed into that database. So you might not be getting your actual family member who's in your family tree. So this is a way of really going into 
the actual records from the state archives for Italy and going into the village records and taking a peek and looking through them. So the first question that we always want to figure out when we're dealing with Italy and if we're dealing with really anywhere, we want to find out what the village our ancestors coming from. And that's going to be really important. And that's going to be the reason we're either going to have a hard time or we're really going to be successful in this. So a couple of things that we want to do before we hop over the pond is we want to check out and exhaust American records to see what is possibly available. So of course we want to be looking at birth, marriage, and death records, church records, passenger records, naturalization records, draft cards, family Bibles, and I'm always so jealous if anybody has a family Bible because they are just a treasure trove of information. Old letters and envelopes, maybe your ancestors might have saved some old letters from their family over in Italy, and you might be able to gain some of that from the address on the envelope or maybe from the letter itself. If you have some old photos, flip them over. It might say where the family was coming from in Italy, or maybe your Italian ancestors had some visitors that were going to go back to Italy, and they may have written that on the back of their photo. Uh, probate records, maybe somebody is leaving something to a family member over in Italy and they want to make sure they're getting that obituaries and also just check out the records for spouses, siblings, check out your family's fan club and see if you can spot where that village is for your family. So don't give up. I even found for one of my ancestors, I was having a really hard time finding what village they were from, but I noticed everywhere that my family went, there was this guy, Vincent Fioli, who moved with them. And Vincent never had any children. He was never married. But I was able to find his draft record. And on Vincent's draft record, he mentioned the town in Italy that he was from. So I went and I looked at the records from that town. And sure enough, Vincent Fioli in that same year was my great-great-grandfather. So that's how I found out my great-great-grandfather's town of origin by using one of his neighbors who just kept moving with him. So it is possible to just exhaust everything you can possibly find and hopefully you'll be able to find that village to start looking for your ancestors in. Now one of the big things that I think people get really scared of with Italian research is that the records are in Italian. And I'm a little bit guilty of this myself, too, with some other languages from my ancestors. I see these languages that I am completely unfamiliar with, and I think this is something I'll just get to in another day. But I want to tell you that if you want to, you can totally do it. You can do it. There are different ways to be successful at this, and there are some key topics that you can Google for yourself to kind of figure out what some of the words mean. So I just want to share some different phrases that are going to help you because you're going to see the same things over and over again in your Italian records. So one of the first things that you want to be familiar with is the numbers. That's going to be really important to you because a lot of our documents that we're looking at in Italy, they are spelling out the numbers. They spell out the entire year the day, uh, street addresses. So we want to be able to identify those. And I will be honest, I am learning Italian myself. I am certainly not fluent in it, but I look at these records all day long. And sometimes I feel like I'm fluent in Italian because you're looking at the same phrases over and over again. So what I like to do when I'm doing my research is I have a chart next to me with some of these helpful phrases in it. And one of them is the Italian numbers. Uh, another thing is know your months that you're looking for in Italy. And keep in mind, too, that these months are not capitalized, because I think sometimes in our brain, when we're looking at these Italian records, we might be trying to identify a month and looking for a capital letter, but that's not what they're doing in Italy. They are lowercase, and we have to be aware of that when we're looking for things. 
another thing is common words that we want to be able to pick out when we're looking at the Italian records. So child, we're looking for bambino, bambina, infantante, father, mother, padre, madre, uh, the names for parents, the different types of records that we're going to be looking at, morti, matrimony. These are all going to really help you. And it's surprising is once you get just a hang of several of these phrases and words, you're going to really be able to dive into those records and get the most out of them. Another thing that is often listed in the Italian records is our ancestors' occupation. And this is a really fun thing to find out, I think. And with the birth, marriage, and death records that we come across, they're going to usually tell not only that individual's occupation, but also the names of their parents and their spouses, even in death records, things like that. So these are some of the very common occupations that you will see over and over again in these Italian records. Braseole is a day laborer and Contadina is a farmer. That's something that you will likely see, I've, I've come to find, in about 80% of the records. Um, sometimes they have fun ones that you can find on there that are rich person. And that's something that my occupation would never say, <laughs> but they have it listed as somebody who's a rich person or a landowner. So when you see something like that, you might also be clued into maybe this person was a person of prominence in the village that people came to or people worked for. So now let's jump into how to use the Italian archive website. Now that we have a little bit of backing with it. So the first thing you're gonna go to is the Antonati website. And it is spelled like this here. And you can even Google Antonati in a Google search and it should come up into this. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is change the language into English because let's make it a little bit easier for ourselves because we can. So go to the website and you'll notice that there is an Italian flag you're going to want to click on the Italian flag and it's going to drop down and we're going to want to click on the English flag. And then magically, everything all of a sudden turns into English. I thought I was getting really good at my Italian because I didn't realize it started to automatically do this for me. And I one day was just looking to some like, man, my Italian is getting so great. I am just identifying all these words. It's really coming in fluent. And then I realized that Chrome was automatically <laughs> switching this over to English. So I didn't, I stopped feeling too proud of myself. So just be aware of that. So if you think you're getting better than you are. So they, if you have been on this website in the past, they have changed the entire look of this in the last two months. And unfortunately, they have also changed the website links. So I was really disappointed because in my ancestry, of course, you always want to source everything. So on my ancestry tree, I had the actual links that were going to be connected to it. I wrote down where my family was from. And then all of a sudden they totally changed this website and those links that I had saved don't work anymore. So I had to go back in and switch everything again or actually put the images just to make sure I had all the right information. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this website, don't save the links because it might not be there the next time you go on. Gosh, Sarah, that's a great reminder that I always encourage people to download the documents. And that's a perfect reason why, because that could change tomorrow. And wow. Absolutely. And, and there was no warning with this website. So that was very upsetting <laughs> to a lot of people. So save, save, save. Um, with this homepage, when you come in here, it will say, what location are you looking for? And this is very temperamental because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I kind of like to just bypass this, uh, screen right here. Cause sometimes I'll put in a town that I know is there. And then it comes back and says, no, this town is not listed right now. And that's really frustrating, yeah. especially if you're using it for the first time. So I like to go right up to the browse the archive button. 
and click that. And it's going to show you this map here. And from the map, you could scroll in and you could see what state archives you're looking at. You want to click the state archive where your family is going to be from. And if you don't know, again, this is a simple Google search that you can do. If you know the town that your family's from, pull up a Wikipedia article on it, and it'll tell you what Providence, what state, what region your family is in Italy. So it's not too hard to do. So find the state archive, click on it. So here I'm going to use Salerno. That's where a lot of my family comes from. And it's going to bring you to the state archive of Salerno or wherever you're looking. And you're going to see a flag here. And this flag is going to be either green, yellow, or red. If it's green or yellow, green is the best. That means everything's on there. It's complete. If it's yellow, it means it's still in the works. You can check back later. They might have some new stuff. And red is it's not ready yet. Um, and that's an indefinite. So if you see a yellow or a green flag, you can go up to where it says search the registries. You're going to click on that, search the registries. And by the way, I also have a handout that I'll be providing uh, to the listeners, too, if they, I guess, if they want to go to your website. So if I'm talking quickly, which I, I think Italians do a lot, <laughs> <laughs> they can hopefully find it on the slower-paced version. You bet. So we're going to click the registry. And then you're going to get to... Right down here, I want you to pay attention to the left-hand margin. And you can either click series or location, if you could see right here. And I find that you could click either one of this and it's kind of going to bring you to the same spot. This is where you're going to go to click on the village that your family is from. So click on that and it's going to give you a whole big list of all the villages that are in the state archive. So for me, I'm going to Click on Ponstilioli, which is right here. And then now I'm in the village or the communes territory, the website. And I'm going to click on the year right over here. You can see the year. I can also click on if I'm interested. I can also click on what type of record I'm looking at or I want to look at. Do I want to look at marriage, birth, or death? Now, that is birth, marriage, birth, and death are the ones that most of these state archives are currently showing. Some of them, and I have yet to do research in any of these, so if anybody has something they want to throw at me so that I can check it out and have some time, is the military records. Because all males of a certain age were conscripted into the military, and they have really good military records. I also found out that some of these towns have a familia folio, and what that is, is basically it was required of certain families to keep a family group sheet, if you will. And I recently found one of these, one of our on-site researchers had found one of these and showed it to me. And it was 20 pages of wonderful genealogy sources going back and just tracing the siblings, uh, where people went in America or other parts of Italy, birth, marriage, and death of all this stuff, a lot of great things. So these are some things that hopefully should be coming down the pike for these state archives that you could be hopefully looking for in the near future. But for right now, most of these state archives are going to have your birth, marriage, and death on here. So we're going to click what year we're looking for. We're going to click on what type of record we're looking for. You're going to click the year. And again, it's going to show you this is what's available for this, this year. We have birth, marriage, and death. Sometimes you can find marriage bands, and those are a really fun group of records because that is kind of like our marriage licenses nowadays, but they're several pages long. And that would be posted on the church door about the upcoming union of people. And people could object to the wedding if there was a blood relationship between the husband and wife, um, if they just did not agree with the marriage, if somebody was under age, what have you. You can find these marriage bans online, and there's some really great uh, source for records. So here I'm going to click on the Nadi, the birth record. And you're going to get probably a lot of images, a couple hundred. And that can be very intimidating because you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to have to go through this entire book of records of a language that I don't know. But there is 
help and there is hope. Right over here, you're going to see a little, looks like an open book icon with an underline on it. Click on that and it's going to give you the gallery view. And sometimes this, as you can tell, this page did not load on me. Uh, sometimes it shows you the page, sometimes it doesn't. But either way, if it does show you an icon of the page, you can't actually tell what's written on it. They used to be able to do that. It used to be thumbnails, but now every page looks the same. So you kind of have to guess. But with these Italian records, and this is very important, most of the time they're going to have an index. And that index is going to be at the back of the book. So it reminds me when I was in, in school and we would have the open book test and we immediately go to the glossary or the index to go look for the information. Same thing. So what we're going to want to do is click on either the last page or the page before it, and hopefully we're going to find an index. And sure enough, here is our index. Um, now, this index is by last name, first name, and the numbers here coordinate with the entry number. So we can then go into this book and find whatever entry number that we're looking for. And ideally, our ancestors' information will be staring us right back in the face. Now, before I show you what a page looks like, because I don't want you to get intimidated, there is a method to this madness and each type of Italian record, just like there is with our American records, follows a particular format. So with a birth record format, you're going to see, and it's usually in this order, which is helpful, the name, date, and entry number in the margin. And that date, again, is going to be spelled out. So it's going to be helpful for looking for our being familiar with your numbers. It's going to tell you the officiating agent and locality. And I think a lot of times people can get thrown off by this. But if you look at these record collections, you're going to keep seeing the same name over and over again. It is not one person having a child over and over <laughs> again, because I think sometimes people get confused with that and they'll think that the clerk is the father. Uh, so it's not. It's the clerk is the first person usually who's being mentioned here. It's going to tell you the gender of the child. And then it's going to tell you the occupation and parentage of the civil agent. So again, we're getting some more information about that person recording the record. So it's going to tell you what the record keeper's parents are. So again, not who you're looking for. Then it's going to tell you the name of the child's father. And a good indication that you're dealing with the child's father is that they're going to have the same last name. So that is one of your keywords as you're looking for that same surname. The child's father, they're going to tell you the age, their occupation, hopefully the father's name, and the place of birth. They're then going to say the legitimacy of the birth, which is usually my wife, or they might say that they're not married. And then they're going to tell you the child's mother, the name, the occupation, her father's name and her place of birth and maybe her parents place of birth they're then going to tell you the child's birth date and place and what's really fun is you can sometimes and especially with these later records see the actual house that the child was born in and that house would be your family's house in most cases they're going to give you an actual house and street address and then lisa i know you love to do this you can then plug that in to Google Earth, and you could take a trip right to your family's house and see that. So oh, that's, that sounds that's fantastic. Really we love that. Um, yeah, really, really cool. And uh, that just gets me away from my laundry all the time because <laughs> I just go right down a rabbit hole. Uh, and of course, we're going to see our chi the child's name. And sometimes you get some really crazy long names. And one of my ancestors has six, I guess one first name and five middle names after that. So you see the whole line up there. And then you get the witnesses, which were often the uh, midwife and anybody else and their occupation. And then, which is also really cool, you're getting to see the signature of the father. So that might be a, a nice connection that you have to see that and see kind of how they, a lot of these block letters 
um, and just seeing that having that connection. So now that I told you this, I'm going to show you a copy of a birth record here. And this is for my great, great grandfather, Lorenzo Fregetta, who later changed his name to Lorenzo Fregetti. And he was born September 8th in 1869. Now this does look rather intimidating, especially because these earlier records, there's no typeface on here. It's all handwritten. But in the world of Italian records, this is actually pretty good handwriting. <laughs> and I'm very glad because I have my grandmother. She just passed in December. She was 90 years old and she would write me these greeting cards and send me beautiful letters. And this was her handwriting. So for me, this was second nature to just pick this up. So I was very lucky with that. So if you can tell right over here, on the margin, you're going to get the entry number, and that entry number is spelled out, and it's the same entry that's going to be in that index, and you get the individual's name. Now, a closer look at the record is some key things are going to jump out at us. So here we have Ponce de Glioni. That's the town that he's being born in. And we have his father's name, Vincenzo Fregetta, and it says Figlio that he is the son of Antonio. So right there, we get another generation. So we have Lorenzo, we have his father, and we have his grandfather on here. We then have his father's age and profession. And he is also have the names of his spouse on one of the other pages. And we can use this information so when we get the, the age of our individual, we can use that information to go back into some of the other records and try to find them in the Italian birth records by knowing that number. It's really interesting born. to see that they had split so, his name. So this would be something, particularly when we're first working with a foreign language like this, to, to be aware they yeah. split Antonio. They, there's no hyphen, and that's not two different words. So that's a really good thing to know. Right. You know what? And that is a great point that you brought up. I was dealing with a client's uh, record, actually, and the way they do not split it up by syllables, and there's no indication wow. that they're splitting it up. And I'm looking at this person's last name thinking, oh, my gosh, like, this is so different. They really Americanized this. And then I kind of put two and two together, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is yeah. being split up here. So, yes, absolutely. Be aware of that if something's not making sense. I'm so glad you brought that out. Oh, um, now over here too, we're seeing the name of the, <clears throat> the mother's father and the mother's father is Lorenzo and Lorenzo is the name of the son. So you can also, by knowing this, the name of the son in relationship to where they are with the parents, you can also maybe figure out that, okay, this child is the second born male based on the Italian naming pattern. So, cause you could see that he's named after his maternal grandfather. So that's also a fun thing to, to play around with the Italian naming pattern. And then if you look down here, we have Vincenzo Fregetta's signature. So that's, you know, you think about, okay, this is the thing that this person actually touched and was a witness to. And I just, I just get chills. Sometimes oh, you've got to love that. Like that. <laughs> and yeah, right. And this is just an extraction of the information. So Vincenzo Fregetta, son of Antonio Vincenzo is a 25 year old landowner and he lives in Constiglione and Carmela Palladino, wife of a uh, daughter of Carmine. I'm sorry, that should say Lorenzo. I don't know why I wrote Carmine <laughs> and wife of Vincenzo Fregetta. So Again, this is, you get a lot of great information about this. And the one thing to remember when you're dealing with Italian records is that women never change their last name. Um, and that is something to remember, especially when you're looking at passenger lists for your family. I used to, when I first started, I used to for, look at some of these records and think, oh my gosh, these kids are coming over to America all by themselves. You know, these nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds are being unattended on their ship. But the mother never changed the name uh, when she's married. She always keeps her father's 
So she's still in the record collection sometimes with them. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and again, this is kind of the format that you're looking for with death records, with marriage records, and you can really have a lot of fun with this website. That, what an amazing, great introduction to so many things to be aware of that are unique and so many things that remind me of really when I research in any other country, um, you know, things to look for in the patterns and mm -hmm. the names and just knowing something as simple as they may not be capitalizing the month. So don't overlook a date just because you're looking for a capitalized letter that's not there. Very simple, but could really snag you, huh? Sure. Sometimes with these records, one of the really fun finds is on the margin, the civil recorder will go in and he'll write when the person was married, who they married, and when they died. So sometimes you can almost get like three records in one in these and, and start looking that way. So oh, yeah, lots of that. good stuff. And I to wanted find. to touch on one other thing that you mentioned early on as you were talking about it that I think is important. And for a new genealogist, they may not be familiar with it. And that's the fan principle. Tell folks real briefly what that means and the role mm -hmm. that plays in all this. Sure. So your fan club is your friends, associates, and neighbors. So we don't want to just be sticking to an actual ancestor and kind of closing off our vision for it, but looking at who else is around them in their community. Check out who's signing off on their marriage licenses or naturalization records. Those people are probably important to that person. And in lots of cases, these individuals who are in their fan club possibly came over to with them to America. Um, and if you can't find information on your ancestors, take some time and do some research on these other individuals whose names are appearing over and over again and see if you can identify where that person is coming from. Because that just might lead you right to your village of origin. Well, this is a great start, but what if somebody needs some help? I know that you are a professional genealogist. Tell folks um, how they can reach you and what kinds of ways that you could help them if they do get stuck. Sure. Um, well, if you get stuck, I work for Legacy Tree Genealogist, and we have people from who are well-versed in all over the world. And with me, I specialize in the Italian records. So you could reach me at Sarah, S-A-R-A-H dot Gutman, G-U-T-M-A-N-N, one T, two N's, at LegacyTree.com. And we do lots of things. We can help you get records from communes over in Italy that are otherwise unresponsive, because it is very hard to get some responses sometimes when you're dealing with local records or parish priests. We have people who are actually on site in Italy and will physically go to a church and sit with the priest and get these records that are just not available online. And another really cool thing that we offer is with the records that are on the Antonati on the archive site, they only go back to 1806. That's when they start. But some of these church records have been around for hundreds of years before that. So we can have researchers on the ground go into these churches and even go further back for your family and see if there's any baptismal records, any of those sacramental records, and really get that connection. And we take that information and we write a little story about it. So it really makes it, everything come to life and you have a piece of your ancestor and you will give you all the documents so that you can see that handwriting and will give you a little translation for it so that you actually know what it says. So hopefully there's lots of ways that we can help you in different areas and even, not even just with Italian, but with anything, any ancestry that you have. <laughs> Absolutely. I've, I've had folks, um, I think Kate at Legacy helped me with some Irish that we did here on my um, Genealogy Gems channel. That was amazing. She was my trainer. She's my mentor. So I love Kate. <laughs> She's terrific. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, this has been great. You've been a wonderful mentor for us to get us started on Italian research. And um, we're going to have links down below this video where people can get in touch with you and with me and for the show notes for this video. So thank you so much, Sarah. It's been wonderful talking with you. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and good luck with your family uh, over in Italy.